The Cavalcade of America, presented by DuPont. Arthur Pryor's famous band is here again. Continuing the summer musical series, DuPont brings you another program of fine band music in the Cavalcade of America. This evening's program includes a wide range of compositions played by the concert band under the personal direction of Arthur Pryor. Just as the Cavalcade of America in music shows the importance of music in our national life, so also does the short story of chemistry on this program indicate the importance of the work of research chemists. The contribution of DuPont chemists for the comfort, convenience, and happiness of nearly everyone is summed up in the DuPont pledge, better things for better living through chemistry. From the days when the caveman beat on hollow logs, through the centuries to our modern concert bands. Rhythm has been man's most natural method of musical expression. Marching feet and beating hearts are part of our rhythmic evolution. In 1896, John Philip Sousa wrote the first operetta in which march music predominated. The Wolf Hopper was the star, and the play enjoyed a long country. Arthur Pryor and his band bring us its song hit, the ever-popular El Capitan March. Capitan was a favorite operetta in the gay 90s. The times change, manners change, and styles of music change. And concert bands reflect the life and the times. Arthur Pryor and his band play selections from a romantic operetta of that same time, the tuneful Robin Hood by Reginald de Colvin. <laughs> Thank you. 
interesting example of the interest in band music that has spread throughout America is the annual contest for high school bands given by the National Society for the Advancement of Music, first held at Joliet, Illinois. Amateur bands are no longer a rarity, as they were when in 1845 the Stonewall Brigade of Stanton, Virginia, founded what is said to be the oldest amateur organization in the country. Today, a college man no longer scorns music as a career. Several of our better-known radio bands were formed when their leaders were still undergraduates. In honor of these many college bands that year after year gallantly urged their teams to victory, Arthur Pryor and his band present a medley of college songs. In 1900, Sousa's band, with Arthur Pryor as assistant conductor and trombone soloist, toured Europe and found that their fame had gone before them. The tour was a triumph for the American organization, and a number of incidents are worth remembering. Let us reenact several of the high spots of the trip, beginning in Germany, where the audiences were impressed by the trombone solo that was played at each concert by Arthur Pryor. One evening in Berlin, after the performance, the manager of the theater approaches Mr. Pryor. Herr Pryor. Yes? There are six gentlemen here who would like to see you. They are the first trombone players from six German regiments. Oh, by all means, ask them to come in. Danke schön. Uh, this way, yeah, gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Pryor. Uh, Herr Come in, gentlemen. Come in. Thank you. I'm sorry. My German isn't any too good. Oh, that is all right. Now, I will be the spokesman for my colleagues. Herr Pryor, that trombone solo you played tonight, what was it? Well, that was a number I wrote for myself. It's called Air Varie. Ah, well, we have all agreed that it is the most difficult solo ever written for the trombone. But you play the air and the accompaniment almost together, like two instruments. Well, I'll admit it requires pretty fast variation. Oh, it is incredible, Herr Pryor. Uh, my friends wonder, could we examine your trombone? Why, certainly. It's right here. Look it all over and you'll see it's just another Thank trombone. You, Dang. What's going on, huh? Oh, these gentlemen play trombones in some of the German regimental bands. They're examining my trombone to be sure it's a regular instrument. <laughs> Nothing up your sleeve, eh? <laughs> uh, Herr Pryor. Yes, sir? Uh, these gentlemen have examined your trombone thoroughly. I'm sorry they've taken it all apart. Well, what's their verdict? Just the trombone? Yeah, mein Herr. But they say that what you do is impossible. They believe it is just another clever American trick. <laughs> In 
In England, the Sousa Band was honored by a command performance before King Edward VII in honor of Queen Alexandra's birthday. At the close of the performance, the King congratulates Mr. Sousa. Mr. Sousa, it has been a great pleasure to have you and your talented organization with us tonight. We are very grateful to you for coming. You may be interested to know that we are having two Sousa concerts here tonight. When the children heard you were going to be with us, they had the gramophone rolled into the nursery and are following your program as far as their records permit. Now, George, please. Yes, Father. Mr. Sousa, in behalf of His Majesty, my father, I take pleasure in decorating you with the Medal of the Victorian Order and congratulate you on a fine performance. <laughs> Where shall I finish? Over my heart, Your Highness. How American. Thank you, Your Highness. I hope His Majesty will allow me the honor of composing a march and dedicating it to him. With pleasure, Mr. Sousa. If you do, I will command it to be played by all our regimental band. <laughs> That led to the writing of Imperial Edward, which John Philip Sousa dedicated to King Edward VII. No band concert is complete without a light, colorful musical impression listed as descriptive. And no band repertoire is complete without several of these descriptive novelties. One of the favorites is In a Clock Store by Orff, which will now play by Arthur Pryor and his band. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Cavalcade of America in Music, presented by DuPont, moves on. Not only do descriptive numbers lend themselves to band treatment, but the music of Richard Wagner is particularly adaptable to the kind of arrangement given it by Arthur Pryor and his band in a special selection from the great music drama, Siegfried. Thank 
let us turn back the pages of history about five centuries and pick up a story that leads to one of the romances of modern chemistry. In 1421, more than 70 years before Columbus discovered America, a party of Chinese visiting the island of Formosa were surprised to find forests of stately trees that gave off a strange and balmy odor. Soon they found that the natives chopped up these trees to produce a gleaming white crystalline substance, having a very fragrant odor. This product was camphor. The Chinese and other Oriental peoples came to prize camphor highly. They pressed it into little cakes, which they used as amulets to ward off evil spirits. Camphor is required today for various medicinal uses, but the really great demand for it comes from industry. Camphor is essential to plastics, such as pyrolin, which is used in making toilet ware, fountain pen barrels, safety glass, scuffless heels for women's shoes, and hundreds of other things. Camphor is needed in making photographic film, too, whether it be the roll variety you buy for your snapshot camera or the motion picture film that brings you your favorite screen star. You see that camphor means a good deal to all of us and that it is mighty important for industry to have an uninterrupted supply at a reasonable cost. But natural camphor is found only in the Orient. And for many years, this source has been closely controlled. Price has fluctuated widely. And in 1920, it was as high as a dollar and 96 cents a pound. For these reasons, scientists of several countries have made many attempts to produce camphor chemically. After years of painstaking research, DuPont chemists succeeded. Not long ago, they perfected a complicated process for making camphor here in America. And what do you suppose is the starting point? Turpentine. Turpentine from the pine trees of our own southern state. This chemical development has provided new jobs and created a new source of income for the people of the South. In quality, DuPont's man-made camphor rivals the finest grade that ever came from Formosa. It not only fills every demand for use in industrial products, but meets the United States government standards for pharmaceutical purposes. As to cost, this new chemical process enables DuPont to produce camphor at a price which makes it unnecessary to buy it abroad. The price for industrial camphor is now stabilized at about 35 cents a pound. This story of man-made camphor illustrates one of the many ways in which chemical research serves our nation. It also illustrates what DuPont means by its phrase, better things for a better living through chemistry. our program will tell stories of American bands of today. Arthur Meyer and his band will again be heard when DuPont continues the first group in its summer musical series of the Cavalcade of America. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. WABC, New York. <laughs>